Declan, <coughs> thank you very much for coming in and for sharing your books with us. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Whatever that empty space was for. <laughs> Whatever that empty space was for. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to By the Book. I'm Lee Tree Lin. Joining me as always is my fellow longtime Enid Blyton reader, Sharmila Ganesan. Hello. And this is the latest installment in our ongoing series of um, young readers, right? In honour of the fact that we celebrate Children's Day here in Malaysia in... What is this? October, here October. in the month of October. Yeah, October. <laughs> yes, and as you can hear, um, we have our newest young guest in the studio with us. We've got Declan Go joining us to talk about the faraway tree. Declan? Yep, that's me. Yay, thank you for coming in. So, okay, before we talk about uh, the book, maybe we can start with what made you decide to read this book? Because when I read it, I found it really interesting and I just got really addicted. <laughs> I heard, though, that you originally didn't <coughs> really want to read the big collection that your mom had at home, but that you had some with some really nice pictures, and that's the how you got... The small ones, and then I just went over to the giant one because I wanted to read more and more, without spending money, of course. <laughs> <laughs> what did you like about the, the drawings in the small ones? They look quite nice. Was there a, uh, one one type of drawing or drawings of any particular things that you really liked? Every single drawing. <laughs> so I think before we talk about the characters and the stories, because they're really interesting and there are some really fun ones, um, the basic outline of The Faraway Tree is that it's the second in the series by Enid Blyton and it features a group of children, um, three brothers and sisters and a cousin. Um, so Joe, Beth, Franny and Rick, their original names were different. They've been updated. But they essentially find this magic tree where if you climb to the top, you get to go to all these different lands and on the way up, you get to meet all of these people who live in the tree. Um, and that's basically the story of it. Yes. You forgot it. to mention the slippery slip. I oh. did. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Tell us about the slippery slip. What is it? It's a slide that goes down the middle of the tree. From the and it goes from Moonface's house all the way to the bottom. Yep. So I have a question for you, Declan. If you lived in this book, would you be one of the children or would you be one of the people who live in the faraway tree? I actually don't know. If you had to choose, which would it be? People who live in the faraway tree, I guess. How come? I actually don't know for some weird reason. <laughs> and for some weird reason, I'd, I like to say for some weird reason. Do you have a favorite? land that came to the top of the tree? Nope. No? They're all your favourites? Yep. Did you have any that you didn't like? Nope. Really? Yep. Even the land of... What was that awful one? Um, the upside down one. The upside down one or the land of tempers. Do you think you would like those? i never even seen them. But you've read about them, right? Maybe. <laughs> but I've never actually seen the, the text. Even Meaning I have never even read about them. Oh, really? True. True. So how do you read the books then? Are you just looking at the drawings? I look at the text and also, but I haven't seen some of them. Right. Oh, I see. Or okay. Some of them are only in the new colorful ones. So which land do you remember or think of immediately when you think of the faraway tree? If you can... Maybe the top two lands that you remember the most. Um, well, I'll I, say I like the food ones. Um, I, I'm yeah. a big fan of the food ones. I, I like right. Yeah, those are really fun. Yeah, um, did like, you which ones? I like the land of treats, especially. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Anything that has food in it. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like the land of spells, um, even though there were some spells that went kind of wrong and weird. It seemed really cool to see how they came up with the different spells. I, I think the spells one was interesting. but And also because you put a gold coin in the campfire and you can knit with smoke. Yes. Yeah. yes. That was very cool. Yeah, I like that spell. Did you find any of them scary? I was just thinking with the land of spells that I, I some parts of it were a little bit frightening. Not for me. All exciting. 
So actually, isn't it a little scary though to think of a land that you can go up to and because the idea is if you're too late or if you get stuck or if something happens, I usually ignore that. Part. You ignore that part. <laughs> Oops, mine have gone too far from the mic. You're okay. Uh, so you you ignore that part. So what? Which parts of the stories then are exciting to you? Because I always thought that the whole like, oh no, you know, we need to get back in time. That was the stuff that I found quite. Exciting mm. or quite scary. All the stuff when they find a problem and have to find a solution and have to get a solution. Oh, actually, that's interesting. Um, I never, I don't usually think of them as solving problems, but you're right. They're usually going up into the lands to find medicine for their mom, maybe, or um, someone got lost, right? And then they went. They, up they to, had to go get them. They had yeah. to go get them. So they're always solving problems. Mm. Uh, do you have a favorite character, Declan? Nope, they're all my favorite. All equal, even the the kids and the people who live in the tree, all your favorites? Yep. Ooh, interesting. I actually, did you have a favorite? Did you have a preference? I love the saucepan man. Um, he's probably my favorite. And he's the funniest, especially. Why, why is he funny? Because he always hears things wrong. Yes, he always hears <laughs> things wrong. Um, except when he suddenly decides to hear them correctly. Correctly, suddenly, yes. yeah. Um, I... I liked the I like the people in the tree more than the kids, I think. I think the kids are okay. They're nice enough, but the people in the tree are the ones that are the most interesting. Yeah. Um I wanted to know if you could make up a land to visit. If you could imagine a land that you wanted to go to, which one would it be? I put two over here. Ooh. Oh. Show us. What is that? This one the land of Japan. <laughs> With infinite sushi, infinite yeah, ramen, infinite tomika, infinite capsule machine, infinite bullet train. That sounds very cool. And even better, no long distance walking and <laughs> <laughs> and of course no cold. So it's oh. a land where it has all the best things about Japan, but without all the difficult things. Yes. Nice. Without the walking. Without the walking. But all the food. <laughs> so that's yeah. one land. It, it looks like there are two. Um, what's the other one? The land of video games. Ooh. What's that like? Well, it has every single game in the whole universe. But how would you... Who would decide whether you get to play them or can you just run around playing any game you want? No limits. Wow. <laughs> it's a video game land with no limits? And no eye problems. Nice. This is a very clever land. Yeah. No limits, no eye problems. And I guess no no restrictions on time, right? You can just spend... Yeah, yeah you need to spend a long time there. <coughs> I have a question though. Do you lose or do you always win? It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. It just matters that you get to play all day long. Yeah. Nice. When did you come up with these lands? Quite a while ago. And you've drawn them out as well? My mom drew this one, but I drew this one. <laughs> What do you think the lands actually are? I mean, they keep talking about them as a land that kind of floats in and floats back out, but what are they? Are they parallel universes? Are they portals to another world? They're, they're just literally magical lands. And so that move on on top of a tree. And? Is there more, you think? Where do they go when they're not on the tree? Next to each other. Interesting. So you think it's like a connected yeah, network? Because I can show you... Why? There was somebody here, right? Oh, here. They flew through the land. Oh yeah, that's right. When they were escaping from something. That's true. Yeah. Um, they sort of went underground and then they managed to the one I the one I read is where they managed to find a tunnel and they could kind of go between land. But they also flew off on a table. Yes, then they flew yeah. off on a table. <laughs> and they also flew off on an airplane. An airplane? I can show you later after we finish it. Yes, doing. it might be in a book that I didn't, or oh, I don't remember reading. Well, it's in this oh, book. Oh, it's a giant book. <laughs> um, I was going to say, though, that in my head, I imagine that there are many faraway trees, and then the lands kind of rotate between them. Mm, I think you may be right. Yeah? You think there are faraway trees in different forests around the world? I remember that. They say the enchanted wood, and the means there only there only is one. Ah, oh. so you're thinking a bus stop system? Yes, like like an LRT situation, <laughs> where, where the lands move to different 
different trees in different parts of the world. I've just always thought of them as clouds being blown about on a wind and there's no system. That oh, was yeah, my assumption. Yeah, the curious wind blows when the land is about to move on. So I think it's just between the clouds. Hmm. If you fly up into the clouds, you might actually get... You might actually <laughs> see the land? Yeah, but you need to find a hole. <laughs> <laughs> Could you just land on the land? Like if you're on a plane? I don't know. You would have to go above the clouds. Mm. This and is true. I think it's only in a straight line or a circle. So you can just fly in the other clouds that don't have land. Mm. The physics of the lands. Mm. Have you ever imagined living in the tree? Because I like the idea of living in the tree and then being able to just pop up and down whenever I want. I have never imagined that. How about going down the slippery slip? Have you imagined that? No, but I've seen in a book. Mm -hmm. You've seen the picture of the slippery slip, you mean? Yeah. I wanted to do the slippery slip. So did I. Yes. Um, And I always thought that I was kind of lazy and that I would rather have a rope to walk up, so, climb up, than to really climb the or tree. Or like, just send a pillow down on the rope and then target three times. Yes, yes. and yeah. target three times, that's right. So I've actually tried to do the slippery slip <coughs> at home. Um, it wasn't safe and you I don't recommend... One? I did, I did. I, I live in a landed home, so I, I just took a big pillow <laughs> and tried going down the stairs. It wasn't as smooth as what Enid Blyton had promised me. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, actually, the reason I like the idea of climbing up the tree is because it grows different things as you go along, right? So some days you get peaches, some days you get nuts. But if they have like chiku, fru- chiku apple, watermelon, that would be cool. And pears, grapes. That would be very cool. All the different fruits that you like. Yes, and all the Malaysian fruit. And maybe sometimes like I don't know. Any food. kind of food. Yeah, like I'm sure it could grow food. Maybe it could grow mac and cheese. Oh, that would be like good a bowl? but messy. <laughs> like a bowl of mac and cheese or just like globby mac and cheese everywhere? Clumps of mac and cheese. Clumps Ooh. of mac and cheese. Mm. That you pick off and put it in your bowl. Fresh. So you, you climb up with wow, fresh mac and cheese on a tree. Always I like, hot. I like this mm. idea. You know what I like about this? It's that on the way up, to the land of Japan mm-hmm. where you can eat ramen and just endless things. You can also get snacks along the way. Yes. Yeah, like the pop biscuits and Google buns. and. Oh, we haven't even talked about the Google buns <laughs> and the pop biscuits. Okay. And I thought of some also. You thought of some like magic treats? Yeah. What are yours? Change about chips and imaginative ice cream. Okay, we need to know more. Tell us. The change about chips, they like change every few seconds. Like they change flavor. So like in your mouth or in the bag? In your mouth. So you pop a chip in and it keeps changing flavors. Yeah. That sounds very cool. And well, imagine if ice cream, you imagine something, yeah. it becomes that flavor. Oh, that is very good. Just one flavor? Can you imagine more flavors? You can imagine more flavors, even more scoops. So it's like never ending flavors. Yeah, and you can change it in your mouth. These are very good ideas. I I just want them to happen right now, <coughs> actually. So, okay, the the chips, the change about chips, are they going to be a mix of, you know, sweet, sour, salty flavours? Or is everything just going to be, you know, kind of salty? Or will we get just anything we want? You can choose flavours. And then there's the spicy and non-spicy versions. Cool. Wow. So could I have, like, an apple-flavoured chip if I wanted? Or, like, a... Like, a, I don't know, ice cream it, flavored potato chips. It can chips. have a different groups because it would have to change every few, every few seconds. Okay. Ooh, that's <laughs> a logic. Or else it wouldn't be called change about. Right, yes, that's true. <laughs> so we're talking today about the faraway tree. Um, have you read other, um, other books from Enid Blyton? <coughs> oh, yes, but I'm not, I forgot to bring them. That's fine. Um, but do you remember some of them? Wishing Chair, there's also, I've read Famous Five, mm-hmm. and, uh, oh, I, I think that's all. Those are good ones. Yeah. No, I was actually, when you were talking about flying into different lands, I thought exactly about the Wishing Chair. Oh. Because they fly on their chair to different lands. True. Do we think that they exist in the same world as the faraway tree? I think it's the same universe, yeah. right? They're visiting similar lands. What do you think? Maybe, but maybe a different line of land. A different line of land? Yes, because we've established that it's ah, in a straight line, remember? Yes. Yeah. So oh, physics-wise. 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 <laughs> That's an interesting word to use. <laughs> 
we we have also. So you mentioned earlier that Saucepan Man is funny, um, and he is very funny. Do you know people in real life who are like the people in the faraway tree, or you know, are, are there people like your mom and your dad or your friends who are like the people you read about? Uh, no. 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 <laughs> Nobody who has a big round face either. Ooh. Yeah, that's true. Yes, moon face. <laughs> moon face. Mm. And nobody who gets in a bad temper very easily. Oh, you're lucky. I might know people who get into <coughs> bad tempers, but I'm not going to say who they are. Now's not the time, Shamila. <laughs> yeah, but maybe after the discussion. After, yes, secretly I will tell you once we're not recording anymore. True. <laughs> okay, but if you, who do you think you're most like in the faraway tree or from in the characters? Saucepan Man. You think you're like Saucepan Man? Yeah, he's so funny. <laughs> if you could, would you walk around with pans hanging off of you, rattling about? Yeah. That sounds kind of fun. Mm, maybe? I'm not sure. I'll probably just shrink a lot of pans and put them in my pocket and just cook anything at any time. <laughs> I'm anywhere. What a process. Yeah. Who do you think you'd be like? I'm like the mom. <laughs> No, <laughs> the one who's always giving chores. The one who's always giving chores and who's never been to the tree. I'm a true adult. No, no, no. Um, I I'm trying to think about it. Who would I most be like? Other than the parents. Other than the parents. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I think I don't know. The girls aren't the most fun characters, no. unfortunately. Um, maybe I'll be like Rick, who is very food motivated. And. <laughs> um, Slightly clumsy. Yes, yes. Oh, that's actually, true. Yeah, that makes me Rick. I'll, I'll go with that. You know, Rick always gets scolded, but of all the kids, I like Rick the most. Yeah, he's the one who has the most sense of adventure. Yes, mm. and poor guy, he just wants chocolates or ice cream. Um, I think I'd be Moonface because I al- I'd always have like snacks for everyone. But Aww. you don't have a big round face. I have a round face, maybe not very big, but... <laughs> I'm the most moon-faced of the three of you us. You need a perfect circle. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it, it doesn't I will, count. I'll try to grow my face into a perfect circle. <laughs> <laughs> and then get the snacks. And then I already mm-hmm. have the snacks. Okay. Um, Declan, when do you read? When, when do you usually read? Do you have like a reading time? Do you read at school? Um, when do you I like to... I sometimes, while waiting for my parents, but mm-hmm. other than at school, no schedule. No schedule? Um, and when do you most feel like mm-hmm. reading? Because I like Anytime. to read at night. Oh, okay, oh, I, used, nice. I used to like to read at wow. night and now I read in the morning more. Oh yes, of course. Mm. But I've seen photos of Declan reading anytime and anywhere. Like on Even the train, in the, in the car, in a restaurant, walking. So he's like a super reader. Yep, I'm a bookworm. <laughs> Proudly so. <laughs> yep. Do you usually read by yourself or do you read with your parents? By myself. Nice. Yeah, I like that too. Because I read anytime, anywhere. You don't need anybody read, else. I can. I don't have to be with anybody. Right. Do you want to see a movie made from the faraway tree? What? Do you, would you like to see a movie made based on the faraway tree? Maybe. Yeah? Not sure. Cartoon or real people? Like the Mario <laughs> movie though. Oh, like the okay. Mario movie. All so right. animated. Animated. Then. Animated. Yes. Nice. Uh, because there might be one, right? Um, it's been in production for a long for time. For a long but time. Maybe, who knows? What does this button do? It mutes you, actually. And we can't hear you. Yeah. Oh, okay. What does this <laughs> so dial don't press do? It. That's the volume. Oh. But you're not wearing headphones. Okay, then. Uh, okay. <laughs> Declan, <coughs> thank you very much for coming in and for sharing your books with us. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Whatever that empty space was for (laughs) whatever that empty space was for (laughs) right thank you Declan